Town. Hello and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Very, very lucky to have the latest Creality CR20 3D printer to unbox, assemble and test uh, for you all. And um, it's been a very frustrating and rocky road. The principal problem was the SD card that they sent me. Unfortunately, uh, was the wrong, but it didn't work. So, um, yeah, ultimate frustration, and hence the reason why I'm kicking a box across the garden. So, um, um, it was really quite frustrating um, uh, trying to figure out what the problem was when it worked in your computer, but it didn't work in the printer. The other thing was uh, there was a kink in the feed, the PTFE feed tube. Uh, and the other thing was the uh, build bed just, uh, I guess perhaps that little drop um, had caused the build bed to come undone. So I had to uh, get the spanners out and sort it out. Anyway, so here's the unboxing. And uh, the, as I say, the packaging really is quite good. And you get some check sheets uh, that, that uh, show that everything has been tested. So that's the quality control. Um, <laughs> what they didn't test was the SD card. It really, really drove me up the wall, that did. Uh, but thankfully, a SanDisk SD card fixed that. Anyway, so uh, uh, there's the printer itself and some of the accessories that come with it as well. Uh, what looks like a toilet roller holder at the top there is the uh, cable reel holder. But it comes with spanners and Allen wrenches and screwdrivers and all that kind of good stuff. And actually it's not that hard to assemble. It's, um, I think, uh, four or six bolts. Yes, yeah, six bolts effectively. So it comes in two pieces. And uh, the frame you assemble to the base there by uh, installing uh, these four uh, frame bolts. Um, and really and truly it's not hard to do that uh, make sure they're good and tight don't over tighten them obviously you don't want to strip the threads and then what you've got to do is you've got to find um, all of the different uh, limit switches motor drives uh, and plug in all of the associated cables the cables are marked up and uh, in most instances um, the cable lengths are exactly the right length for that particular plug. So it's quite easy to find which plugs to plug these little connectors into. Apart from this one right here, where I had to do a bit of hunting to find the connector. And um, there it is. I don't know if you can see it. Boom. Yep, it's in there. It's uh, stuffed. It's hidden away in the back of that housing. So uh, anyway, once all of those were installed, uh, the next thing that I had to do was uh, fix the kink in the PTFE Bowden feed pipe. Yeah, just checking that everything moved and oh yeah, there, there's the build table. Yeah, um, the build table was just, uh, well, just completely loose. So I had to pull all of that apart, take all of these uh, leveling wheels off. I'll show you how to use those in a little while. Once, uh, once I disassembled all of that, I was then able to uh, take a, a spanner to these uh, rollers, to these bearings here, and uh, make sure that everything was locked back in place and everything was nice and tight. And I will say this actually, um, the printer itself has uh, produced some pretty good quality prints now. Uh, so I'll, I'll say that I am actually pleased and relatively happy with, with its performance. Uh, but you did have to sort of engineer your way around a few little problems. And, uh, and also, as I say, the SD card was the most frustrating issue uh, as it worked on the computer but didn't work in the printer. Uh, thankfully, uh, a SanDisk 8GB SD card fixed that. So um, here's, here's that kinked, and I'm guessing this, this must happen uh, when, when they package the printer up. I don't know if it's going to happen to everybody's, uh, but certainly uh, this is how mine came with this big kink. And so what I had to do is uh, I had to disable, uh, sorry, uh, disassemble um, the uh, little plug from the hot end there and uh, pull, the, pull the pipe out. The pipe actually goes in quite a long way into that print head, as you can see. Uh, and then what I had to do um, was, well, then I didn't have any spare PTFE. You can't just use regular air pipe. It has to be PTFE because that print head gets super, super hot. If you just use regular air pipe and put it in there, um, 
uh, it'll melt inside the uh, inside the hot end there. So uh, the other thing I, I noticed that if you use a cutters, um, it doesn't make a very pretty job of that connector. I've subsequently um, replaced that entire pipe now, and I'll explain why that pipe uh, limited the distance that that print head could go. So I could only print small things. So I've, I've changed that com complete pipe out and put uh, a different pipe in there and also uh, used a razor blade to chop the pipe so it had a nice flush fitting end. So this is uh, installing the bog roll holder. Uh, I guess this is sort of useful when you're sitting on the loo and your th 3D printer is in the bathroom. Um, it can hang on to your toilet roll for you. And then um, this, uh, this little build bed that you can see here, this little plastic sheet um, sits on top of the hot plate um, and you print on that surface. Now what's good about that is when you pop it off with those uh, bulldog clips there, it flexes and it gives you the ability to be able to un uh, take remove your print from the bed quite easily. So uh, here we are, uh, printer fired up. If you notice that the feed rate there is uh, going up and down as I rotate the knobby. If you click the knobby, uh, you get into uh, the screen that gives you the ability to be able to do all sorts of things. To home the machine and various other things. At this point, I was sort of quite ex quite excited. I was thinking to myself, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, we're, you know, we'll soon be printing. Um, little did I know that this SD card problem was uh, going to rear its ugly head. Anyway, um, as you can see, the printer has there uh, just uh, gone ahead and homed itself. And what I've got to do now is um, get that paper underneath the print head and uh, using the thumb wheels, just get the paper so that, so that you can feel that the paper's trapping ever so gently between the print head and the print bed. Um, and that is effectively setting up the print head or leveling the print bed so that the print head uh, prints on a level surface. If you don't do that, you'll end up with um, uh, extruded plastic just sort of coming out all over the place and you'll just end up making a big ball of spaghetti uh, and things won't print to your, to your, sorry, things won't stick to your print bed. Another thing um, that uh, you're going to want to watch out for with this, by the way, is this particular cable here, uh, for some reason, when it came out of the box, this cable gets caught up. It gets caught up on that, uh, on the Y-axis drive motor there. And, um, What's funny is no matter how much you wiggle it around, it just seems to want to go back there again. So uh, I guess perhaps when it's in its packaging, a little bit of plastic deformation takes place. And um, anyway, uh, with a little bit of wiggling and a little bit of uh, careful jiggery pokery, you get it set up so that um, it doesn't actually catch anymore. All right, so that's the printer all set up, and this is me now getting a bit frustrated, trying to figure out why that SD card doesn't work in the printer. I'm thinking that it's likely going to be a problem with the uh, motherboard, which is a version 2.1 motherboard. And uh, anyway, all of that was um, doing my head in. So um, the, the good news is, is I have all got it working, and again, um, and just to reiterate the fact, it was down to the SD card that was shipped with the printer. So if you're going to get one of these, um, you might want to have yourself a little 8 gig SanDisk card in backup. Now, a good thing about this printer, um, it's a 24 volt power supply, uh, which means that the hotbed heats up pretty quickly. Also, the hotbed can get up to 100 degrees, uh, whereas... Um, uh, on some of the earlier versions or some earlier printers, uh, things were 12 volts and um, it would take a long time for the hotbed to heat up. And in some instances, the hotbed maximum temperature was like 60 degrees. So that means ultimately that you can print ABS on this printer as well with a hotbed that goes up to 100 degrees. Um, anyway, so here I am trying to figure my way around the SD card problem, uh, getting really frustrated with things. Um, but eventually, as you'll see, uh, you will note that uh, 
that we actually get some great prints done. Anyway, so uh, the, the benefits then of the printer, as I said, 24 volt hotbed, so you've got a much faster heat up time. Um, the power supply is integrated into the base of the printer, so you don't have a separate box sitting by the side of the printer, and there's no ugly ribbon cables uh, and that kind of stuff. And the build volume on the printer is 220 by 220 by 250, which is actually a pretty good build, uh, build volume. Uh, the drive control circuits are upgraded, uh, so it means that you can resume prints. And uh, if you have a power failure or if your wife turns off the printer accidentally. And um, also the bed leveling is easier with those large adjuster wheels. So, um, how easy is it to get going and print something? Uh, well, once you've got the thing set up and you've got a, prop, a decent SD card in there, uh, you're off and running. It's great. I've actually uh, spent a little time working on designing a Raspberry Pi laptop, and uh, I've taught myself um, a basic uh, free CAD, and I've learned how to create STL files and how to slice those STL files um, and uh, do all that kind of good stuff using Cura software, generating the G code and starting the printer. So, um, I have actually now made a whole bunch of stuff. Um, one, one thing that uh, my friends complained at me about was the fact that uh, I didn't have a decent uh, pull uh, flush on the loo upstairs. So I've printed myself a pull flush. Um, the other thing uh, was uh, 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 a micro, an adapter uh, for my windshield for my uh, handheld Sony uh, recorder. Um, yeah, there's just all of a sudden, there's loads of things. And of course, the missus wanted a Shaun the Sheep cookie cutter and that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if it's been useful for you, please don't uh, hesitate to stick thumbs up, subscribe. Um, you know, we will be doing more three, 3D printing stuff in the near future. I've actually got running upstairs. I'm printing a pie girl, which is effectively like a little a bit DIY um, uh, Game Boy. Uh, uh, so you put a little Raspberry Pi Zero in there, a screen, some batteries, and effectively you turn yourself, you know, you, you're building a uh, uh, another little handheld gaming console. So, so that's the plan at the moment, um, and there's uh, various other things I'm sure that this will be very, very useful for around the house.